ഓം ശ്രീ ഗവേശായ നമഹൻ ഓം സദാശിവ ശുഭാരംഭം ശങ്കരാചാര്യ മധ്യമ അസ്മദാചാര്യ പര്യന്താം വന്ദേ ഗുരു പരമ്പര ഓം സഹനാവതു സഹനോ പുനർത്തു സഹവീര്യം കരവാവകൈ തേജസ്വിനാവതീതമസ്തുമാവിദ്ഷാവകൈ ഓം ശാന്തി 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 ഹരി ഓം ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതേ വൈവസ്വതായ മൃത്യുവേ ബ്രഹ്മവിദ്യാചാര്യായ So we, we are seeing the third valley. I think we went up to the seventh mantra in the last class. So in this third valley, Bhagavan is giving a metaphor for the life. So life becomes a journey. And the way he, the, the reason why he is um, giving this example of you are traveling in your lifeline and your instruments, your faculty of embodiments or your chariots and all that is to feed the disciple the means by which he can attain moksha. So the life journey, you know, sometimes we may get uh, a bit distracted, you know. And when we see, we read Puranas, we see the you know, great sages, they travel to Himalayas, Kailash. Uh, Karzal goes to you know, Himalayas. Karik Kalamiyar goes to Himalayas. So they go somewhere to find the moksha. Isn't that? But that kind of a belief is good. It's like, you know, child hold, holding the parent's hands. You know, it, it hold the hand, can walk for some time. But once he knows how to walk, he doesn't need to hold it. He has to let it go. So it is not somewhere you need to go to understand, attain the liberation. It is that you have to travel the distance in time and space within yourself. What is the distance in time and space, you know? So you are far away from me now, that's in physical space. When I think of my past, I am far away in time, my past. But here, the distance that we have with our real search for truth, the freedom, the destination, the happiness is in the not understanding of it. The gap is the darkness. The akasha is not the space that you need to travel. It is the darkness you need to transcend. Asadoma satkamaya. So the journey is, in the Lakshartapa, the journey is that you are dwelling in darkness, going hither and there, But if you can transcend the darkness with the light of knowledge, your journey comes to a beautiful destination or the journey ends. And to do that, what it is do, he gave some, uh, the first six, seven verses, he gave some examples. Vidam bivandav sabdasya loke guham pravishto parame parathe By doing the, to enjoy the karma pala, to enjoy what you wanted to enjoy, you take embodiments and the embodiments 
is what enters into this body as a light and the shadow. Then he said, Yasyedur e jananam aksharam brahmayatpanam abayam tridishadam param nachiketam sakemaki. So when you take this journey of life, and if you know that it is a journey, you have two ways of going it. One is following the karmas, doing all the karmas that you need to do, progressively go one after the other. Someday you reach what you need to teach. And in this um, karmas, if you are specially equipped to understand Vedic karmas, that too, the Nachiket, the Agni karma, you attain uh, a better acceleration in your progress. That is one path. Papa Punya path. There is another path for those who are thinking deeply. Now I know this journey is not about physical acquisition of health and wealth and well-being, birth after birth after birth. But to really transcend my darkness of my ignorance of not knowing what is all about. So I take this jnana marga. So therefore, I look for the shreyash, look inside me. So there are two paths now No. Then in the third and fourth verse, what did he say? Atmanam radhidam vitti shariram pratime vitu buddhim tu saradim vitti manak pratime vacha indriyani khyana hur vishayam stesh kocharan atmendriya manoyuktam bhoktet ahur nishanaka. Oh, having known this path and travel, I will now also tell you what makes this travel easy for you. You have a chariot, a beautiful uh, horses driven chariot for you to go in this travel. For that, your body is the physical character of the chariot. Your indriyas are the horses that pull them. The reins that control the horses is your mind. And I will give you uh, a, a, a excellent chariot called Buddhi to drive this thing. Now you pay the Buddhi the dividends that he deserves. Enjoy. So you are a jiva. Bhokte du ahur manishaka. You see, this is how you, you never say I say this, you know. We always say that, no. If you discover something, I discovered. I made it. I did. Who are you to say? So even the Madhama Raja, the Brahma Vidyacharya is saying, Bhakti Edu Ahur Anishanaka. That means the knowledgeable people say. That's what you always say. You always say that you learn this as learned, learned people say. So we saw this in the third and fourth verse. Then in the fifth and the sixth, what did, this, what did he do? He started giving you a little bit more elaboration. You see, I give the chariot to you. You are a learner, a learner driver now. Now you don't give your uh, you know, BMW 7 series you bought to your daughter who just passed the test. Right? You give them instructions. Yeah. So here he is going to say, Yasta abhijnana van bhavatya ayuttena manasa sata sata ayuttena manasa sata. See, now you say, is, You got a buddhi, buddhi is a chariot. The mind is the rain. Suppose I am the driver, or the, so you are the jiva, you are my boss, 
I am your buddhi, I am driving this chariot of you. But if, if I am thinking something else, I let my reins loose. That means the, I am not a buddhiman, I am not a vijnanavan. What is vijnanavan means? What is vijnanam? Vijnanam is the ability to apply the jnanam that you got. The science of that. The application of it. Not knowing is ignorance. Knowing gives the jnanam or sastra jnanam. And applying the jnanam, the skills to apply is vijnanam. So you need vijnanam. That's a medha shakti you need. In Saraswati Puja, we why do we put all these tools and uh, uh, you know, hammers and knives we worship yesterday? Because they are the tool sets to make your jnanam into vijnanam. I learned carpentry, but I don't know how to do it. I need, I need the chisel, I need this uh, knife, I need the hammer, I need the scissors to cut, I need the pen to write. Every tool is a sadhana upakarnam for me that helps me to convert my jnanam into vijnanam. The vijnana shakti is what we need. What's the point of knowing to sing if you don't sing, if you don't teach? What's the point of knowing to write if you don't write? Application. So many of us, this is one of the problems that we have. Sometimes we have a skill. Everybody got a skill, no question about it. Everybody got lots of skill and there is some skills which are predominant due to your vasana and every skill will come up in you. You're able to sing, you're able to write, you're able to drive, you're able to manage. All these things will, like a sprout, they comes out and you need to grab it. If you don't grab it, they will come and say, okay, maybe he doesn't want me anymore. They go away. If naturally you are able to sing, cultivate it, nurture it. Vijnanam. That's what we pray to Navashaktis and especially the Mahasharashwati uh, yesterday. We pray you, you are a Icha Shakti, Jnana Shakti, Kriya Shakti. Kriya Shakti is the Vijnana Shakti that makes the Jnanam to be a Kriya Shakti. Now, if I am able to apply, I am a vijnani. So, vijnanavan. So, it means my boss tells me to drive there. I know how to drive this horses. The chariot is in good condition. I now ride them, drive them to go where they need to go. If I am not that, I am a vijnavan. So, if I am a vijnavan, I am not able to control the mind. Now, my, my, my rope is loosened up. The horses know. Horses are very sensitive, sensitive animals. They know, okay, this guy is not driving me. He's letting me go loose. So I go here and there. So what happened? You are dushtaswa ivasarte. Dushtaswa. Your horses become mischievous. Your indriyas become mischievous. You are in the class and your mind is thinking about the pub. Because you are a vijnavan, not the vijnavan. So we saw in the fifth mantra. Sixth mantra, you know, he's teaching like a child to his child. Just change a few words and say, okay, what happened if I'm a vijnavan? Just vijnavan, Gavati. Ayutthena become yukta. You know, we, we saw the word yukti, yukta. I don't want to repeat again. Vijnanam is the application of knowledge. Okay, I got the I got this knowledge now. I, I learned this now. I, I must do pranayama. I got this knowledge. I go to Sasan, the teacher told me, do pranayama, I'll be good. Fine. I want to do it. So I, I go to sit there. So I'm trying to do the vijnanam. Just, I'm not just knowing it, I'm applying to do it. 
But the mind is thinking about the music coming from the other room. The mind is not cooperating with you. That means ayuktam. Ayuktam. Yuktam means when the mind is aligned to the buddhi. You see, forget the esoteric philosophical part of all this. These are all life sciences. What you're learning is life sciences. Anything you do, knowledge is just one part. The willingness to apply knowledge is the second part. The mind to cooperate is the most important part. Mind is the chief operating officer. When the mind and buddhi works together, there is yuktam. So if you are ayukta, your manas is not there, your heart is adrushta. But if you are yukta, sarvendriyani vashyami. Vashya means Vashyam, uh, attraction, controlled. Avashya means it's not controlled. Now hear what he's saying. If you do that, Sat Ashwa Iva Sardeha. Sada Ashwa Iva Sardeha. The Ashwas become very good horses. You are like a good charioter. You are, you are a controlling character of the chariot. Mind is with you. Reins are with you. Therefore, hearts are with you. Okay, this is the lesson we learned. Then we saw briefly the seventh verse. Abhijnana van Bhavati. She uses the word, okay. Yastva Abhijnana van Bhavati. Amanaska sada suchi. Ayukte naha. Amanaska. See, all the same. This is what I say. You can learn a lot of vocabulary in Sanskrit in this simple verses. Amanas, amanaska. Amanaska means one with the mind. Amanaska means one without the mind, right? That is not the case. It is not, you cannot be without the mind. The mind is not Pashyani. Mind is not in control. So what happened to him? Na Na apno you na na apno di Saha na apturi what that padam that position what is the position that destination that you want to go what is the destination depending on your life journey if you want to do a lot of punya karyam you want to get uh, acquisition of health good health good wealth you will get it but your mind has to go with your thing. You want to attain the moksha loga, I want to attain brahma loga, vaikuntam, kailasham, after the body, disembodiment. You will attain it. You want to attain liberation, mukti in this janma. You will attain it. But if you are avijnana vandavati, amanaska, na apnoti, you will not get it. Okay? So what I, if I'm not getting what I want to get, if you not reach where I want to reach, what happened to me? Samsaram cha adhika chati. You will attain samsaram. I think it, this is again figurative lift stage. I mean, it is not you attain samsaram. You are already in samsaram. So the interpretation should be, it's not that I am not in samsara now I am going to samsara. You are you are dwelling deeper. You are in a loop. You are in a go around circle like you know. Yesterday when I was flying back from my work, the airport was busy, so it went to go around, goes around like that. You go around in samsaric cycle. So up to that we saw in the last class. Now we take the uh, eighth verse. We, we try to see as much as we can see today. Yast vijnana van bhavati samanaskya sadhashushi. It's quite easy. 
like the like last verse. There is a vijnana one, here is a vijnana one. There it is amanaska, here is samanaska. Sada suchiki. Sada, sada is a very important word. Sada means always. Just because you were in the class, you have a resolution now. Yeah, I am going to be every day 10 minutes meditate. Then when you leave the class, it goes away. Then it is not sadha. Sadha means always suchihi. Suchihi means pure mind. 99% of what we need to do to attain moksha is not jnanam at all. Forgive the jnanam. Make your mind suchihi, saucham. Make your mind pure. Because when the mind is pure, jnanam is not something to be acquired. Jnanam is what you are. Aganta Satchidanandam is you. You are this jnana swarupam. Therefore, I don't need to really understand the intricate Vedantic knowledge to become mukti. Don't, don't think like that at all. Even if you don't understand any single word of all, this, all these classes, it does not matter. But if you understand this, which is suchihi, you are sada suchihi, your mind is always pure. Because if it is pure, I am, my mind is like a crystal, like a mirror which is unblemished. That means it reflects my true nature. That's why when you go to the great Mahatmas, you go with your problems and you don't even tell him what your problems are. And he's talking to you as if he knows your problem and he's telling you something to recover. And you feel peace. Not that Mahatma knows that he's not an astrologer, some sort of a magician and uh, he got some sort of a special power to read your mind. He doesn't even know that he's got the power. In fact, you should not know he has the power. If he knows he has the power, he is not, he's powerless. Then how does he, how does he give me that kind of a blissful, consoling words of wisdom to me, which correlates to me? That's what you see. You always find when you see somebody, when you talk to somebody, when you go to a place, you feel peace, right? That is a, that is a guru's thumb. Somewhere there is a grace of guru is there. Why is that? See, every word you can you can contemplate for many hours. Because there you see purity. The Mahatma's heart and mind is absolute spadikam, blemishless, mirror. He has no, he is amanaska that way. Samanaska hai, suchiki, sada suchiki. So when you go there, his mind is a mirror in which you see yourself. So you are, you are the center stage. Whatever he says is what is in his mind. In his mind is your picture, your blemish, your ego, your plea, your prayers. And he cannot speak anything else because he has no other mind. His mind is pure. What comes to his mind is what he's going to say. So what comes to his mind is you, your plea. You see? So all this we do, all this mantra japam, pranayamam, going to temples, worshipping, punya yatra, navratri homam, devi durga kavasam, parayanam. All that is to make you sada suchiri. That's why sometimes we say, hey, I, I read this mantra. Nobody taught me what's the meaning of it. People say, what's the point of reading a mantra, slogan, if you don't know the meaning? Don't, 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 don't go by the argument. Don't need the meaning. 
You don't need to, when you eat the tablet, the doctor gives you, you don't know what the prescription, what's the content of it. And if you do that, you only get confusion. You just take it. It purifies. So you don't need to worry about not having knowledge, but you have to have the sangalpam that I have to be sada suchihi. Whatever I can do. So that's why you said you, your agaram has to be, we saw that in the last class, what you eat makes your body pure. What you listen, what you hear, what you say, everything makes every indriyans better. Okay, I do all that. What happened? Sadhu tatpadam apnodi yasmat bhuyo na jayate. So when you are like that, apnodi, you attain, you reach. What is that? Yasmat. Yasmat means from that, from what? See, every word he must ask question. Why? Why? How? He must connect to the last mantra. Samsara. Last mantra is I. Tum samsaram. He doesn't. He get into samsara. He doesn't get out of it. So here, yasmadi means samsarat from the jalmas. Buyaha na jayate. Buyaha. Buyo means buyaha. Bu means again and again. Na jayate. So that means I don't, he doesn't get birth again. That means I come to the dead end. This is a positive dead end. The horses cannot go anywhere. The route is finished. You come, you reach the destination. That means your, your journey has come to a paripurnatvam. You don't need to worry about which way I had to go. It completes. Now, up to now, he has given you a lesson about life and he given you the means about the life's journey and gave you a couple of mantras to say why your indriyas are to be good. If indriyas are good, mind is in control. If the mind is in control, mind listens to buddhi. Then you have yuktam. If you have yuktam, you have power to drive. Sadasuchiki, if you keep your mind pure and yuktam is always there, you will reach your destination. Otherwise, uh, ayukta manasaha, your dushta indriyas, your senses will go out of it. So, so this is what we need to practice. Now here we are not for practice, here we are for learning. Okay, I, I put aside, so I'm going to spend 90% of my time in purifying my mind. Now I have purified if I do everything and if there is no more journey, that means I reached somewhere, what is that? So that is what he is going to say in the ne next mantra. So what is saying here? Vijnana Saradir Astu Mana Pragraha Vannaraha Sotbanaha Paramap Nodi Tatishno Paramam Padam So here he is describing again the Atma Padam. So we talk about Atma, Atma, Brahmam, all this. The final destination, the final attainment, the final goal, the perfection, what it is. Who gets that and what is it? So after this one, after this mantra, we are going to go into the deeper of the Vedanta as well. So Vijnana Saradir Yaha. Yaha is whoever is Vijnana Saradihi. Vijnana Saradihi is Vijnana one. I keep repeating so that it can go into your mind. Your intellect has to be the Vijnana one. So what is your Pragna for the 
for the buddhi. I will know what is right. I will know how to implement that. I will have the free will to do this. This three makes you Vijnana one. Know what is correct or how to do it. Desire that I will do it and then commit to that. So if you are the driver, then he gets manaha pragraha grahavan naraha. Pragrahavan. Graha, graha means that, that reigns, that control. The mind becomes a very strong controller of the heart system. Yuktaha. Now he says, Naraha. Now the word Naraha, naraha means, you know what is Naraha means? Human being, right? See, sometimes the Lakshyartam come from the usage in the context. Madam Raja using the word Naraha before he used the word Mrityaha. Mrityaha is one who dies. So all men are mortal. So we have also died. But the Naraha point means Naraha, that means Raya Shabdam is for destruction. Rudraha. Raya. Naraha. That means one doesn't die. So Naraha, so, so Naraha is the immortal being in me. So here he says, you see, the moment you have the tools, you become immortal. You haven't really got the Atma Jnanam yet. He says, if you are Vijnanavan, Buddha is Vijnanavan, your mind got a Yuktam, Sada Suchihi, then you, I won't see you as a mortal being. I see you as a Naraha. I'm, I'm not a Jeevan Mukta yet. But I'm a Naraha because I am aware I am the immortal being. But I have not realized it. See? Naraha. So he's used the word Naraha. What has he done? Sir? Saha, that Naran, Advanaha Param. Param means a um, conclusion, the end. Advanaha, Advanaha means uh, Ayanam, the Prayanam, the journey. Advanaha Param. The, the end of the journey, he attains up Nodihi. See now, you will not now surprise when you see the end comes on the on the journey. You will not say, oh, I am stuck. If you say you are stuck, you are not yet the Vijnana Vansaradihi Manapraknaha. You are still a Mrityaka. But if you are a Naraha, so here is the insight. Yeah, we even do a lot of punyas, mind become sweet and uh, blissful. If you are not aware of your purpose of the journey, that means the Vedanta Jnanam you must have. So this comes back to my recommendation, which I always say. Even though I say 90% of the time you spend in doing all this Siddha Chitta Shuddhi Prayatnam, you must always have the purpose that is for the Vedanta Jnana Purnam. Then I become a Naraha who drives his cars. When I see end of the journey, the train stops, then I say, ah, I got what I want to achieve. What is that? Tad Vishnu ho Paramam Padam. That is the Parama Padma Vishnu. So then what happens? Brilliant. So this is a, this means. I have reached the Vaikuntam. The Lord Vishnu is sleeping. I will there. Will I be there inside or will I be outside? Will the Dwarabalaka let me in? Or like they have suppressed the Sadarishis and Sanagatis, 
will I get stopped? Will I stay in there? Will I stay closer to the Vishnu's feet or not? Don't worry about all those thinking because in Vedas, Panishad, the Shabdam for Shiva, Vishnu is not the Puranic Shiva, Puranic Vishnu. All this is not there. The Puranic imagery, everything is to do what? Sada Suchiki, to purify your mind. If he is not real, it is real. Empirically real, relatively real. Because Bhagavan says in Gita, you know, whichever form you worship, and if you want me to, see, you want to come to you in that form, I'll come to you. I worship as Allah, He is an Allah, Jesus of Jesus. Shiva, Shiva, Muruga, Muruga. That's the reason why you cannot do conversion of religion to one another. You can't convert somebody's belief into your belief. It's a futile exercise. Who is, who is, who are you to say, my belief is better than yours. You believe in whatever you want to believe, but however you think, yad bhavna tad bhavati. How you want it to come, to come to you like that. Because all this is samsara. If I want to see Lord Vishnu coming to me like Krishna, play with me, yeah, he will play with you, but he will be gone. For sure. Because you want him to be in a limited form. He's unlimited. That's why, you know, he's gone one day from, from uh, Dwaraka. Every God manifestation will go. You cannot say, even God is mortal. No. God is mortal. The Godhood becomes mortal because you limit them, you bind them. Oh, God is this vigraha. Oh, if you are not this vigraha, smash it. You don't. You are a non-believer. How stupid you are! So you are bringing God into a vigraha in a murti in a form because it helps you to do sada suchiki. Why? Because. You cannot bring the God into any form you like because he is Vishnu. Vish means pervading. He's all pervading. Shiva. Shiva means auspicious. Oh, I know, I know a great uh, uh, Oraniga is, is uh, he will not say Shiva's name because is my stream Vaishnava. It's fine for him. But if Vishnu means all pervading and Shiva means auspiciousness, is not Vishnu auspicious? If Shiva is auspicious, is not Shiva all pervading? So if you take a definition to your comfort, you are further limiting Parabrahma's Swarupa. Already the form is limiting. Every form is limiting. That's why when you, you worship in all the forms you see, like a butterfly, like a snake, like a cow, like a monkey, like a pig, like beautiful Krishna, like Rama. You can sculpture, paint. Then you know we are limiting, limiting. Then you see, okay, I look like the whole Akhilantam, like an egg, like a lingam. I come to the Shiva Lingam, a Rupam. Then, even then, is limiting. What is beyond the cosmos? Why I'm saying this is a space boundary? How can it be bound? So you see, the journey is now a cosmic journey. The horses still go. So that must be something beyond all this. Then you drop all this form then what do I have? Say it. Infinity, you cannot have a form. I can say infinite. Anandam, I can say. Anandam, I can say. Brahma, I can say. Rama, I can say. Krishna, I can say. That has no limit. Though you move from the 
In the Shaguna Bhupashana, you move from the worshipping of idols and frames and thing to namas. Sakasha namas. Koti namas. Then every time you do nama, you are finding difficult how to say a new nama. Oh, he's, he was carrying a flute. So Venugana Surupa. Danda Pani. He got a Danta in his hand. Go Danta Pani. He got a Danta. So you have the Imagery in your mind, you invent namas. Ambal says, yeah, sotrupya. Go on, child. Try to say all the names you can. You try Sakasra Kodi, it doesn't end. Then again, you see, from this is a Jiva Shristi. So what I'm saying, you must think very carefully. I'm, I'm not criticizing it. I'm trying to open your mind. Everything we do is V Srishti. You know, you do, you do Navaratri, just take a step back, Navaratri. We worship Navaratri, put all the dolls, especially in South India, we do dolls, Kalu, worship. Isn't it like a child's play? Every year, take the dolls, clean it up, put it there, decorate it. So what difference does it make to my grandchild who is playing with this dolls, imagining something. Exactly the same. The child is playing, you say, oh, child's play. You enjoy it, but you think it is it's for his own happiness, it's playing. Child play. What am I doing? I'm doing exactly this. How can it be very different from a child's play in a month? I may do a lot of Sagasnama Puja, I do all this, I distribute prasadam, I worship. I'm just playing. Because now it is not, it is a very highest of life because what you do without realizing it, the whole thing is a play. It's a divine Leela. That's why it's called Leela Bhati, Lalita. Lalita means beautiful. Leela means a frolic song. <laughs> Playful. See, you elevate now. But just because this knowledge comes in, please don't think, oh, now I know this is play. I don't want to waste my time putting Galu. No. Because Ambal is playing. She's creating all this. When she's creating all this Jiva Rasis and she's playing, why can't I do the same thing? I create. I create my own world. So we are at par with Ambal, par with Brahman. Only thing is, we do not know who we are. We are Narada. So here, therefore, Vishnu is not the Puranic Vishnu. So I'm sorry to disappoint you if you think that way. It is Parabrahman. So that Vishnu plays. Okay, where is it? I know Kailasha is Shiva, Sakilogam means Brahma. I couldn't be Vishnu. No, this is beyond all that. Even they worship to find out where it is. That Puranic Vishnu, Puranic Brahma, Puranic Rudra are trying to find out who is the Parabrahma for it. So there you're going to go. See, so we say, um, Agna Vishnu, Sajojo, when we say that, Timnair, Vaji, Piragadam, we say, Agna Vishnu. Agna means auspicious, effulgent, Vishnu all pervading. Okay. So with that, we finish the nine mantras, which are the sadhana, sadhya, indri. Let me see what's the time we have. We can start the next one or not. Okay. I'll start this one. Nothing I thought. Okay. In the 11th and the 12th month, 10th and 11th mantra, he is now taking into a completely different thinking. Now, okay, the whole valley is for our practice. This is our lesson. This is the practical lessons we are doing. Having given example of a journey, having given the instrument for a journey as a chariot, having validated your faculty to be a pure, having made you a Vigyanavan Saradiki, and then telling you that 
take this journey, you will reach the destination you want to reach. And the destination will be the final destination of freedom, Vishnupatam. Your question you will ask, what is beyond that? Is there anything beyond that? How do you say it is, it is the ultimate? Because after all, you are telling me this is the end of it. So this suspicion we need to quell. So he's going to say, the 10th and 11th, Indriyepyaha parahyartaha atkepyascha parammanaha manasastu parabuktir buddheratma mahan paraha. What he's saying here, this he uses the word param. Indriyepyaha Indriya means here Indriyas sensory organs indriye pehe paraha artaha artha means the objects paraha let's take the param the simple meaning is um, superior let's skip that one then he says ardepyascha Parammanaha, the mind is bigger than the earth, all these objects. Manasastu para buddhi. The buddhi is above the mind. Buddhi ratma mahan The mahan atma is bigger than buddhi. Now, before we dwell into this mantram, the padartham, just take a step back. You need to know, recall the Tattva Bodhas a lot. I'll try to remind you. So I am the traveler. My buddhi is my charioter. My embodiment, this body-mind complex is my chariot. Vishayas are the arthas, right? Artha means vishayas. All the objects of the world towards which my senses go, the horses go. So the, 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 the street in which I'm riding my horse is a street of objects. Objects may be relationship, uh, things that you do, everything. So my whole journey is about interacting with the world. Now, we know this external journey of traveling forever leads to nowhere. It goes to samsara again, forever, forever. Andar moya baharatya bagir bagir sadurlaba. Sadurlaba. Durlaba means very difficult bagir, going outwards. So the journey has to be inward. But again, you want to attain only the biggest of it. So the word param is used. So param, here you should contextually, you should take it into four different meanings. Here we see three meanings. The fourth one you see the next mantra. The literal meaning is superior, better. But the three other meanings you should take, first one is sukshmam. Param means sukshmam. Sukshmam means what? Subtle. It is less gross, subtler. Second one is vyapti. Vyapti means expansion, spread. See, the first, first is subtlety. Second one is expansivity. The third meaning for param is conditioning, niyanda. What are the three meanings I'm saying? Little meaning is superior, leave it there. Sukshma, 
Number one, expansive. Number two, conditioning. Okay. Now, let's take um, this. Is this actually dealing into what's called uh, pancha kosha? Pancha kosha, which are. Pachikosa Vishara means five sheets of your body. Remember what are the five sheets of the body? What, what, what is your body? We can see it in three ways or five ways. What are the three ways? Stula Sariram, gross body, Sukshma Sariram, Subtle body, Karana Sarinam, the subtle most body. Sula Sukshma Karana Sarinam. Do you remember that in Tattu Bodha? Doesn't matter, you can, you can learn it now. Stulam means gross, that you can see, perception, can, can touch, you can touch, feel, sense, taste, smell. That means this hand, this face, this body, my liver, my kidneys, my spine, my blood. That is a stulam. This table, this chair, stulam. Everything in the world is stulam. Gross body. Sukshma. You, you are not just a body. If it's just a body, you will call me a corpse. Right? Someone. But I am a man because I speak, I think, I talk, I breathe. So there is something inside me which is sukshma. And we used to, we, we put everything into one name called prana. And say, when somebody is dead, the prana is gone. So that means the sukshma body is gone. Some say the soul is gone. Okay, it's not the right thing, but it's fine. Then what is this karana sariram? Karana means the reason, the cause. Why this this sukshma body, sukshma sariram, and this tula sariram sit in this frame of appearance in front of you and names itself as Raja and all that and talks. Why is he doing this? That there is a reason for it. That is the karana sariram. That is the subtlest. So I can show you my body. You can see my body. I don't even have to show you. You can see it. But can you see my mind? Can you see what my, what I have thought? So? so you can see, I, I, I just figuratively say I go inside. Okay? So my body is gross, but my mind is subtle. So what is one meaning of the word param? Sukshmam. So my mind has to be param. Sukshmam. But why I am in this mind, the body, I don't know. But logically, there must be a reason. Yeah, logically, there must be a reason. But I don't know. That means the reason exists, but you don't know. That means it is a subtlest. So the karma sarina is para para. It is subtler than subtlest. So you can you need you see the the application of the word param how it is used. The second meaning of the word param is vyapti, I said, expanding. Now I am here. Can I be in um, Singapore now, same time? Not. But my mind can be. How can the mind be here in Singapore at the same time, almost the same time? Because vyaptam. 
It can be expansive. It can be there. Oh. So that means when things are getting subtler and subtler, the expansive nature says, yeah. Look at this uh, uh, incense sticks in the prayer room. It is burning. Smell, the smell goes to the other room. The stick cannot go to the other room. But the smoke goes to the room. The smell goes to the room. Why the fragrance is subtle? That's why when you are a soft person in nature, you are more influential because you, you are, you are, your softness in character, your subtlety brings more expansive power. So just keeping yapping all the time in a, in a, in a place, sometimes even the silence is the greatest eloquence as Bhagavan Ramana proved. Because it's subtle. Subtleness gives you more vyapta. So you use it. You understand how the param is used for the second meaning also. You need, you need to remember this, then only the, 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 the Madhav Maharaja's instruction will be very clear. So third meaning, niyanda. Niyanda means control. How is this body is controlled by mind? If mind is sukshnam, mind should control the body. I say the body, oh, cure, get cure. It doesn't get cure. So where is this control aspect comes in? You know, you, they, scholars know we will ask this kind of question. That's the reason why they made the Sarira Trayam is coming to Panja Kosham. Kosham means the sheep that covers. So they divide these three bodies analogy or, or analysis into five different sheets. They say, okay, since you're asking lots of questions, come to this class. And this class, they say, I'm going to say your body is of five different sheets. Like a pillow cover, five different covers. Oh, but somebody said three sariras. Yeah, yeah. But I'll map the three sarira to these five sheets. Okay, go on. This body of yours, the gross body that you say, stool of sariram, what it is made of? See, bone, blood, flesh, skin. Yeah, yeah, but how, how are these made of? By the essence of biochemistry of the food that is consumed, Anna Mayam. Is it? Yes. I thought my body eats the food. No, body doesn't eat the food. Something else eats the food and makes it your body. What are you saying? I'm saying. My body is not the enjoyer of food. Oh, I taste my mouth. Yeah. There's a dead body. Put the food in the mouth. It doesn't taste it. The body is not the consumer. Body is a result. Body is a consequence. If you know this, be very careful what you eat. Body is the consequence of what, what is eaten. Body is the Annamaya question. Mayam, the word Mayam in Sanskrit, uh, Abhyam, it is used to say made up of. Maya Mayam, Jnana Mayam is full of Jnana. So Annamayam is full of food. That's the reason why uh, not everybody has vegetarians, because Annamaya means body is Annamaya, it's full of food. Full of food means it is a desert for somebody. High course meal for somebody else. Something eats something else all the time. Again, please don't get this into mindset that uh, eating non-veg is therefore a sin in that sense. No, it is a nature. Each cell eats something else. But it is an impediment to chitta shuddhi. That's the reason we avoid eating non-vegetarian food. We are not a judgmental on saying Vegetarians are sinless, non-vegetarians are sinful. No, that means 95% of the world is full of sin by just by eating. 
We know we cannot pass judgments like that. That is not the scripture's words. You can choose not to eat because body becomes what you are eating it and body is an instrument for your mind. Therefore, it has to be a pure. Therefore, may you not eat. That's how it goes. Okay. Then I say, okay, teacher, my gross sariram is Annamaya Kosham. Correct. So I got one sariram mapped to one Kosham. So whenever I say Annamaya Kosham, Sthula Sariram. Sthula Sariram is a result of what I have eaten. What do you mean? It's a result of what I have eaten. I am born. Yes, because it is what you have eaten. What I have eaten before? All your desires. Eating is not just, I told you last class, agaram is not just going into your taste buds. Agaram is what goes to your smelling, your hearing, your seeing. Consumption of all perceptions is the food that you eat that makes your body. Okay. What about the Sukshma Sariram? Okay. The Sukshma Sariram is a bit complex because it is Param, Vyaptam, Suksham. So Vedanta says, I will slice it to three parts for you. Okay. Please don't go too subtle because I'm not able to learn from gloss to subtle. Okay. I'll give you start with something which is gross-like but subtle. What do you mean by that? You can feel the grossness of it, but it is subtle. What is that? Prana. Oh, I can feel the prana. Put my hand there, I can see it's, yeah. But it's just a one part of prana. It is a movement of the air. That's a gross aspect of the prana. The prana shakti is what makes everything works in your body. Oh, what is it called? It's called pranamaya kosha. It is a big sack, energized sack, which is inside, subtle. That's what goes out of your body, gross body, when you're dead. That's why we say prana has gone. The pranamaya kosha has gone. Okay. Is that the Sukhsu Sariram? It is Sukhsu Sariram, but it is the envelope of Sukhsu Sariram. It is a sack. So what is inside? Well, inside there is a mind. The mind is a sheet which manipulates your thoughts. Chitta Vritti. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand. So is it a question? Yes. I call it Mano Maya question. Mano Maya question. Mano means Chitta Vritti. Maya means made up of. Question means a sheet. A sheet made up of thoughts. Ah. Wait a minute. I have a doubt now. If you're saying mind is a question, is it subtler than prana? Yes. I mean, is it param? Yes. That means it is more vyapitam? Yes, I told you. I can, I can breathe here, but I can't breathe in Singapore at the same time. But I can be in Singapore. So pranamaya kosham is grosser than the manomaya kosham. The manomaya kosham is param to pranamaya kosham. Okay. But how does it control it? You said Nienda. How does the mind control the prana? Or how does the prana control the body? Ah, that's a good question. The body is controlled by the prana. You know it very easily. When you are angry, you, when, you are, when you are breathing very fast, you see your body's reaction. When you are feeling sick, you see your body's reaction. When you breathe slowly and shallow, you see your body's reaction. So breathing 
influences your body. How does your mind influence the breathing? It's simple. When you are confusionless, when you are not vacillating your mind, when you are focused, you watch your breathing, breathing becomes shallow or uh, slow and deep. So, it means my manomaya question, param to my pranamaya question. Correct. My pranamaya question is param to annamaya question. Correct. Then what else there? Well, in the Sukshma Sarira, there's one part which is missing, which is the topmost layer of the mind called buddhi. But we use the word vijnanamaya question. Because buddhi is the faculty of knowledge, vijnana is the application of it. The vijnanamaya question is param to manomaya question. Therefore, it is sukshma. How do, how do you say my buddhi is subtler than the mind? After all, it is a mind. In, in English, we use the same word, mind, manas. Buddhi is subtlest form of mind. Why it is subtler than mind? Because now you are not in the gross plane, not even in the mind. Thoughts keep on coming. When does the thought convert into a, a deep thinking in you, to jnanam in you? When it settles down, the rasam of the thought becomes, before it becomes siddhantam, it becomes a lot of process, it becomes settle. So jnanam, jnanam is the resolute thinking of the contemplation in the buddhi, is param to the chitta buddhi. So now if I take this whole sack, sack of Pranamaya Kosham, Manomaya Kosham, or the Vijnanamaya Kosham, I call the whole thing as Sukshma Sariram. Understand? So who is in the Sukshma Sariram? In the, in the Stura Sariram is the body, which is the Ratham, which is the chariot. We come back to the Kadobanisha. In the Yama's example, that is the chariot. Okay. Now I know chariot is what I feed into chariot. Therefore, to keep the chariot tidy and clean and well all po you know, polished, I must control my food habits. That's it. Food habits and exercise habits. Then the hearts, hearts the, the range, the mind, the sarvi, buddhi, all become one into the Sukhna Sabina. Well, you didn't talk about the Indriyas. You said Pranamaya Kosha and Manomaya Kosha. Where is the Indriyas coming to? Well, this mind, when it is with Sattva Buddhi, knowledge centric, it translates into a buddhi layer. So if you take a mind as a muddy water, when it is rasam, it becomes a buddhi. When the mind uses the like octopus, the claws, and then just go and uh, you know, make stir this mud and create muddy stuff with many claws, that power of mind is Indriyas. Understand? So the mind is called Andhakarana, is full of thoughts. The finest layer, which is with the Sattva Pradhanam, is Buddhi layer, Buddhi Kosham, Vijnana Mekosham. The lowest form where it uses its power to stir up things get vishayas through indriyas, that is indriya. It is not a kosham separately because it is it is without mind, doesn't exist. 
Therefore, it is connected to the Manomaya cosmic self. But why then it is special? It is special because the Indriyas are expressed because of the Pranamaya question. So even the prana is not running, somebody can just take a deep uh, breath and then do a deep samadhi. The uswasam, the uswasam is not happening, respiration is not happening, he can be thinking. But the indriyas requires prana shakti to listen, to hear, to see, to taste, to touch. Your prana has to run. Therefore, the indriyas are expressed through the gross form of the prana energy and therefore the indriyas need to be converted into two aspects of it, your karma indriyas and jnana indriyas. The jnana indriyas are the knowing powers, the karma indriyas are the doing powers. Walking is a karma indriyas power, walk shakti, speaking, is a jnana indriya's power. Eating, holding, karma indriya's power. So, the karma indriya's requires, karma is what? Karma requires three means. Kāyena vācha. You need a body, you need the words, you need the indriyas. Now, what he is going to do, let me see if I can once again. Okay, I'll finish with this one. So, what he is what he is going to do in this thing, he's going to now take his and he's going to now and subtly he is giving you, oh my child. Therefore, don't imagine you're going to take some exotic travel to Ganges and Kailash and all those Punyashetras to do this travel. No. This travel is going to happen inside you. The purpose of travel will be very clear because you are dwelling in the lowest form of your potentiality. So you need to move away from what is lower than your true potential to higher potential. It means you expect him to say, you are not the body, you are not this uh, prana, you are not the mind. So you must say, Annamaya question is not there, right? But here he says, Indriya Pyeha Parangya Arthaha Arthya Pich Param. So he says, little meaning for this mantra now. I'll stop with this one, two minutes. Indriya Pyeha, beyond the Indriyas, Arthaha Paraha. The objects of the world are better or superior or subtle or yakti, the endaha. Why is he not starting with the physical aspect of it? Because he knows you are a meritorious student. He doesn't want to dwell in this physical aspect anymore. Some some teachers will tell tell you later. Therefore, I come into the same um cue and say, look, we're going to worry about the body. Body is very tangible, gross. It is not us. We pass that one. So we go to the mind. But before we go to the mind, I look at the indriyas, the lowest form of the mind. What are the indriyas gave me? Indriyas is the one who dragging me to this journey. See this world, see this house, see that uh, uh, um, uh, richness there for him. Go for it. So it is going after the Atta. So he is giving a very practical start. He is telling you, Arthaha Paraha Indriye Para. So more than the senses, the objects of the senses, sensory objects are more subtle, Vyapta, more controlling, more powerful. You understand? Because you, you, you are, your life is driven by the objects you see, the objects you want, the things you want. So I cannot come and tell you, hey, 
you, what you're looking for is not important. Your mind is more important. You'll say, get out. That's what I want. So your indriyas are not in control. The object is in control. Therefore, the arthas are more important. Then arthya plascha param manaha. But then you realize the same object when I get it after some time, it doesn't interest me anymore. So the interest I got on the object is because the mind wanted it. Interest gone because the mind doesn't want it anymore. Therefore, it is not the object that is superior. My desire that comes in the mind is superior because mind is param. Of course, Bhashikara doesn't beat around the bush. He takes the meaning of Artaha, not as I say, the objects of the world. I, I say that to make it easy to understand for you. Bhagavan says, Artaha means uh, the Ichaha Artaha. Vishesya Ichaha Artaha. That means the desire to desire on things is Artha. So, which is basically what we conclude. It is not that Apple phone is better than my Indriyas. That's what I said first. It's a good start to go with. But what it actually means is that the Apple, Apple iPhone is good, is a thought I have, the desire I have is subtle than the Indriyas that brings it. But then before that, subtle is the mind. The mind is subtler than that. Of course, then I contemplate the, the, the clear part of the mind and say, why are you asking for this? Last year you wanted the Amazon came, you know, book, Kindle book. Today you want this one. You throw it away after some time. All this is a waste of time. Let you focus your mind on money or something else. So buddhi, a determinative faculty comes in, it, it becomes better than the mind. Manasastu para buddhi. Buddhi is bigger. Then that means pranamaya kosha settle than the annamaya kosha. Manomaya kosha settle than pranamaya kosha. Buddhi manasastu para. It means Vijnana Maya Kosha, Sotunda, Mano Maya Kosha. Now, if you take this logical order, and you know the Panja Kosha Vicharam, what should the teacher say next? Logically going, therefore, Ananda Maya Kosha is bigger than Vijnana Maya Kosha. But he doesn't say that. Buddha. Atma Mahan Paraha. I mean, Mahan Atma means some Atma, which is Mahan, call it Mahat, is subtle than the Buddhi. Now he's gone something somewhere out of me. So why is he jumping? He was just going through teaching me about my body, my indriyas, mind. Suddenly he jumps on man. It's a mark of a great teacher. So he wants you to think through it. We will take it in the next class. So we stop it here. Om Sakana Bhavatu Om Sakana Bhavatu Om Sakana Bhavatu Om Sakana Bhavatu Thank you. Sorry, I don't know whether you heard anything or all because my speakers miss everything was half. So I don't know. No, no, it was clear. It was clear.
Only, only the last uh, Shanti part, there was a little bit of... Um, a little bit, yeah. Backup coordination.